In this video, I'll show you how to build a CI-CD pipeline in CloudFormation, which will use AWS Code Pipeline to deploy a VPC from a CloudFormation template in an S3 bucket. To get started, I have two CloudFormation YAML templates, one for the VPC and one for the Code Pipeline. Since this video is on CI-CD, I'll focus on the pipeline template with a brief overview of the VPC template. If you'd like an in-depth look at the VPC template, I have a video on building a VPC with CloudFormation that I'll link to in the description below. Taking a brief look at the infrastructure template, in the resources section, I have an AWS EC2 VPC type. This VPC will have a CIDR block range of 10.0.0.0 slash 16. I also have an internet gateway and an internet gateway attachment whose internet gateway ID is a reference to the internet gateway. And the VPC ID is a reference to the VPC. I have two public subnets whose availability zone properties will be selected at the appropriate element in the list of AZs. Public subnet 1 has a CIDR of 10.0.0.0 slash 24, and public subnet 2 has a CIDR of 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Both have VPC IDs, which are references to the VPC. There's a public route table, which has a reference to the VPC, and a public route with a gateway ID, which is a reference to the internet gateway, and a route table ID, which is a reference to the public route table. The public subnet 1 and public subnet 2 route table associations both have route table IDs which are references to the public route table. And the public subnet 1 route table association has a subnet ID which is a reference to public subnet 1. And the public subnet 2 route table has a subnet ID which is a reference to public subnet 2. I also have two private app subnets and security groups for the app, an SSH security group, and a web server security group. For the NAT gateway, I have elastic IPs for NAT gateway 1 and NAT gateway 2. And NAT gateway 1 and NAT gateway 2 have allocation IDs, which will get the attribute from their associated EIP's allocation ID. NAT gateway 1 has a subnet ID, which is a reference to the public subnet 1, and NAT Gateway 2 has a subnet ID, which is a reference to public subnet 2. I also have a private route table and a private route with private app subnet route table associations and route tables for both private subnets. The web servers are EC2 instances of type T2 micro and have hard coded the image ID for this demo. And finally, for the output section, I'll export references to Web Server 1 and Web Server 2. Again, if you'd like an in depth look at the templates that I use to create the VPC, I recommend watching my related video. In the pipeline template, I have a parameter section with parameters for the pipeline name, the S3 bucket which will hold the infrastructure template, the S3 source key, which is the name of the zip file to be uploaded into the bucket, and the template file name, which is the infrastructure YAML file. The pipeline will create two stacks, a test stack and a production stack after manual approval. There's also a parameter for the change set name and an email address for pipeline notifications. The metadata section groups the input parameters. The resources has an artifact bucket store, which will be an S3 bucket with versioning enabled. There's an SNS topic for the pipeline, which has a subscription endpoint, which is a reference to the email. The pipeline resource will be an AWS code pipeline pipeline type its artifact store property will have a location which is a reference to the artifact store bucket and a role ARN whose attribute comes from the pipeline roles ARN. 
the pipeline has three stages. An S3 source stage, a test stage for creating the test VPC infrastructure, and a prod stage for creating the prod VPC infrastructure. The S3 source stage's action will be to get the template source from the S3 buckets, S3 bucket configuration, which is a reference to the S3 bucket provided in the parameters, and the S3 object key is a reference to the source S3 key. The test stage has three actions, to create the stack, to approve the test stack, and to delete the test stack. Creating the stack will be a deploy by CloudFormation with the configuration's template path pointing to the template source. The approve stack is a manual approval and the delete stack is a CloudFormation deploy with action mode set to delete only with a reference to the test stack name. The prod stage also has three actions. The first is to create the change set, which is a CloudFormation deploy, which takes a template source as an input artifact, and the action mode for the configuration is change set replace. The stack name is a reference to the prod stack name. The change set is a reference to the change set name, and a template points to the template file. The approve change set is a manual approval, which will send a notification, which is a reference to the code pipeline SNS topic. And the execute change set is a cloud formation deploy for action mode change set execute, which has a change set name with a reference to the change set name created above. And the stack name is a reference to the prod stack name. The CFN role resource is an AWS IAM role, which is used to set the value of the stack configurations role ARN. Now we could jump back up to the parameters section, copy the name of the bucket, then launch a terminal and execute a command to create the bucket. Now back in the parameters, we see the source S3 key has a name of infrastructure template.zip. So I need to compress the infrastructure template and give it this name. So I'll copy the name, go into the folder that has the template files, compress the infrastructure template and rename it. Now I'll head back over to the terminal and execute a command to copy the zip file to the bucket. Now if we go back over to the template YAML file, we'll see that the web servers have a key name property of CCKP. So I need to jump into the EC2 console and create a new key pair named CCKP. Now with the key pair in place and the zip file in the bucket, I could jump over to CloudFormation and create the stack for code pipeline. So I'll upload the template, click next, and give the stack a name. Scroll down, enter an email address, then click Next. Under Permissions, I'll select the CloudFormation service role, which I previously created, which for this demo gives full access to EC2 and S3. Click Next. Acknowledge that CloudFormation may create IAM resources, and then create the stack. And with the pipeline stack created, I could jump over to code pipeline, go into the stack, and now we see the S3 source stage is complete, and processing has moved on to the test stage stack creation. Now the test stack creation is complete, so I'll jump back over to the pipeline and approve the test stack deletion which will trigger the prod stage processing.
the test stack delete is in progress, And now with the test stack deleted, I'll jump back over to the pipeline. And we see the create change set for the prod stage is in progress. Now the change set stage is complete and the pipeline is waiting for my manual approval to execute the change set and build the prod stack. Now the execute change set is in progress. And now it's complete. So I could jump over to the EC2 console and we see two running instances of our web servers. So that concludes this video on building an AWS code pipeline for CICD of infrastructure using CloudFormation. I hope you found it useful.